Friends, a warm, warm welcome here to Circular Quay. This is Gadigal Land. My name's Rob Carlton, and today we are celebrating the announcement of the ACTA Ceremonies for 2022. It's the 12th year the ACTA Ceremonies been here in Sydney, and we're so excited to be here again. 7th of December is the night of the ceremony. Monday the 5th of December, we've got the Industry Awards Luncheon, and right through that week, we've got the Industry Screen Fest, which is all the practitioners running workshops so we can keep the skills for the future alive. I'm joined today by the Minister for Arts here in New South Wales, Benjamin Franklin. Ben, a warm welcome. G'day Rob, how are you? Mate, I'm very, very well. Thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure. Now Ben, you are the Minister for the Arts, but you're also the Minister for Regional Youth. Now one of the reasons I'm passionate about storytelling, passionate about our screen sector, is that I believe the sharing of our stories makes life less lonely. So as the Minister for Regional Youth, can I ask you, well, I guess a high level question at this stage, how does the arts play out in the lives of the young people in New South Wales? Well, I was a little country kid myself. I grew up in a little town called Barham on the Murray River and uh, I wasn't a sporty kid. For me, it was all about the arts and that was the way that I could connect with uh, with friends, with peers uh, from all over the region. Um, at uh, The first time I did it was actually at a, a place called Barambula, which was a, a, a camp which brought together all the creative kids, the artistic kids. And I guess it was then when I was, you know, 10 or 11, uh, that I realised that this was such an important pathway for me, but for also a lot of other kids who perhaps um, were a little bit out of out of the, the norm, they, mm -hmm. they weren't, they didn't quite have their tribe yep. until they found those creative kids. And so, um, taking on my role now as Minister for Regional Youth, I'm looking through that prism mm. to try and give young kids in the regions, certainly if they want to have, if they want to focus on their sport or they want to focus on uh, those sorts of things, that's great. But I also want to make sure they've got those pathways uh, if they're a bit uh, of a more creative nature. Yeah, look, I might dig in there. So I've been chatting a lot recently to young 18 year old boys yep. as it happens. Um, and this young fella I'm thinking of specifically uh, he was an incredible sports player, he's great at rugby, great at cricket. We grew up uh, on the central coast yeah. there, beautiful beaches. Um, he just started acting last year though. And he said, Rob, for so many years, I've been imagining that there were conversations that I've been missing out on, but it was only until he started acting and started having creative conversations. He said, Rob, it's like there were these shadows at the back of my head and all of a sudden I was able to give voice to them. So when we talk about kids that are sporty or kids that might not need the arts, I've got a slightly different position. I want to hear your thoughts on it. For all those kids that don't think they're creative, that don't think they're arts, do you believe that the arts still inform their lives? Oh, 100%. I mean, look, we know. I think we, we saw through the, uh, the last couple of years when we were all stuck inside, we were uh, you know, on the couch in lockdown or whatever. What did people turn to? Uh, they turned to Australian film, they turned to Australian literature, they turned to Australian music. They were the things that got us through. So if art, art and culture is important in the lives of every single person, even for those who mightn't think it's particularly relevant to them. And for young people, it's more important than ever. And um, you know, I look up on the Northern Rivers where I now live, um, we've got an incredible organisation called Screenworks, which um, uh, obviously supports regional artists, regional filmmakers, but particularly their focus on providing a pathway and an avenue for young people uh, to come through. Having that, um, that sort of pathway is incredibly important. Mm. To stop young people, particularly getting taken to the, the major cities, to give them uh, those sorts of skills and those sorts of avenues, uh, still in the regions, I think is, is incredibly important. Absolutely, and look, I think Screenworks did partner up with the Academy over the last few years. So yeah. that pathway, again, we at the Academy are so proud and pleased to be in a position to gather up the extraordinary work of people like Screenworks so that we can offer some sort of pathway right through. So now that's what I want to get to. Yeah. So you've been travelling around a lot. Surely you've noticed that there's all of these kids out there developing a screen language yeah. with their phones just through play. Is that something that you've seen? Lots more interaction with screens and with, 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 with that sort of cameras, etc.? Oh, no question. I mean, you know, my, my godson is uh, actually, he's what, 10 years old now and he's, he's making his own movies. You know, and, and cutting them and putting music on and doing the special effects. I mean, it's incredible. You know, things that, that when you and I were kids, Rob, we would have had no idea how to do. And they have an intuitive understanding of technology now that uh, I think is extraordinary. Um, and that's why, for example, you, you asked me before about my regional youth portfolio. Yeah. 
We have as one of our programs the Holiday Break Program where we uh, bring young people in to provide them with um, different activities. Certainly there's sporting things and other bits and pieces, but we've also lent very hard into the arts now. And so we've got filmmaking workshops, we've got songwriting workshops, all of those sorts of things. And these are now the most popular um, uh, forums, the most popular activities of, of all across the state. And so that shows there's such an appetite for young people uh, to get involved in the creative industries. Absolutely terrific. Now I want to draw a line in a minute between that and of course the celebration week that we've got coming up Absolutely. here in December. Um, but before I do, I wanted to just jump into that notion. So we've got all of these young kids yeah. and at the moment they're slightly disparate. They're sort of spread out and about. And they've got all of these screen language skills. Tell me, over the course of the next 10, 15 years, do you see the opportunity, if you will, to gather these disparate skills, these young kids growing up, and have it and turn it into a screen boom, if you will? I absolutely think yeah. so. I mean, you just have to look at you know what we've had in the last 12 months. We've had 158 productions, local, international, TV, streaming, that have been shot in Australia. That's double the number of the year before. There's no question, the latest figures that I saw said there's going to be a 5% increase every year um, in productions. And I think that's just the beginning. Because I think we've got, as you rightly say, we've got this extraordinary generation of young people about to burst through who've already got the skills, who've got the initiative, who've got the understanding and who've got the ambition uh, to be involved involved in this industry. Uh, I think it's going to be an incredible, an incredible time. All right, so terrific. So we've got all of this energy and it's sitting there waiting to explode. So tell me, why is an event like the Actors Ceremony uh, here in December 7th, why is an event like that important for all those young kids? What's the connection point? Well, it provides them with, um, I guess, the capacity to be seen. You know, I say, to be seen, you need to be seen. And so for them to be able to see uh, an industry lauding, uh, not just the stars, of course we all love the stars, but just as important, in fact I would argue even more so, is what goes into making those films. The costume, the set design, the editing, the, the, the sound. Uh, you know, all of these things are so important. And for them to be able to see the opportunities that they can have in a career, for them, for them to be able to see that in, in you know, one night of celebrating uh, our stories, our landscape, our creativity and our art, uh, I think is incredibly important. Mm, absolutely, I think it was an extraordinary moment when we had David Goldblum um, celebrated here the, um, a year or so ago. It was the most extraordinary sort of outpouring of, of, of joy and, and, and well-wishing, which again, I guess, brings me then to one of your other portfolios. You're the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs. Now, obviously, the actor has an extraordinarily strong connection to our First Nations people, and, and my hope is that the community uh, at large is getting much better at slowing down and listening, uh, listening with our hearts in that space. But again, how do you see the screen sector um, and your role in the arts <coughs> combining with the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs. What's, what's the connection there? Well, I always say First Nations first. Yep. And that's what we need to do, not just in terms of, well, you look behind us, the Aboriginal flag now sits proudly atop the Harbour Bridge. Yeah. Um, and I'm very proud that we were able to achieve that. Yeah. Um, but it's got to be about more than that. It's got to be about in every part of uh, government, in every part of our community, we need to have Aboriginal people and Aboriginal culture um, at its heart. That's why I was so proud to appoint Kais Hepworth, who's the head of Screen New South Wales, a really strong um, Indigenous woman, um, to provide that focus and that support. We need to ensure that those 60,000 years worth of songlines and storylines uh, are really thrust into the forefront um, of Australian storytelling. Because not only is that important for us as a nation yeah. in terms of our understanding of who we are, um, but also it's important for the world to see what our, uh, what our story is. It's the oldest living civilization on the planet. Yeah. Uh, we should be so proud of it and we should be advocating, supporting it, promoting it everywhere we can. Absolutely outstanding. So then let's jump into that. So let's just now take what you said and talking about our stories on the, on the world stage. This is something that the Actor Awards, we, we believe we're really proud of. We're able to beam, um, well, we're sitting in front of the most beautiful harbour in the world, I'm slightly biased, but we're able to beam these pictures out to the world. So I guess from a tourist, gosh, we're covering all of your portfolios today, aren't we? <laughs> so from a tourism perspective, that, that's, that's wonderful and amazing. But if we can get, I guess, into the longer play, which is that notion of sharing our stories with the world. Who are we as a people? What can we learn from our stories and help join this international conversation, if you will? So from that perspective, 
what does the screen sector and the academy have to offer the Australian people on the world stage? How, how do we get the most out of that? So obviously we start with our landscape, which is incredible, yeah. you know, and to have so many films uh, lean into... Well, we've uh, got Fur Furiosa. Furiosa, which is the most expensive <laughs> film ever made, right? But it's also... George it's shooting, Mill is going... It's incredible. Shooting in Western Sydney, but also shooting in regional New South Wales, shooting in some of the most extraordinary locations. But of course, that's on the base, on the back of so many films. You know, you start with, obviously, you know, you've got Mad Max or, or The Matrix or Priscilla or yep. Yep. The, these, the prequels to Star Wars or The Great Gatsby. I mean, on and on it goes. Yep. There's just so many which actually show and highlight Australian scene. But of course, we've got The Drover's Wife, which is up now. Right. And to, to uh, have those beautiful... Um, images of the snowy mountains, um, mm. just incredible. Because that that sort of promotion yeah. for Sydney, for New South Wales, uh, money can't buy. Um, because there is something so special about film. Mm. When people go into a cinema, that they sit quietly with an audience as part of a collective to see the representation of another country, of another culture, there's something so important and so powerful and so meaningful. Uh, and that's what I think, you talk about my tourism portfolio, yeah. that's what drives people to come to Australia in a way that, you know, a book or a newspaper article or an advertisement can't possibly do. Absolutely. Now, we've been talking, I think, fairly reasonably so at a national level today. Parochially, though, it must be kind of nice to have the, the ceremony right here in New South Wales. Oh. I mean, not that, oh, look, I'm not, I'm not going to suggest we're going to have a us versus them kind of vibe, <laughs> but it's kind of nice, right? The Actor Awards are incredibly important, but they're part of the broader focus on the Arts and Cultural Centre in, in Sydney. You know, I love these awards being here. I love the, the ARIA Awards, the, the Fashion Week Awards. We've now got South by Southwest in Sydney. For the first time, it's out of America. And, you know, the, all of these things focus on the fact that Sydney and New South Wales is passionate about arts and culture, yeah. that we are a centre for arts and cultural creativity uh, in the world. In fact, I want us to be the cultural centre of the Asia Pacific, um, and I think that we can achieve that end. Tell me about that. You want us to be the cultural centre of the Asia Pacific. So what does that mean? I guess, let's take it back to these young kids in regional New South Wales. You've got a high goal, yep. and so what does that mean for all of our young people growing up in the next 10 to 15 years wanting to make New South Wales their home? Well, it means obviously they've got a pathway in terms of a career, but it also means that we, we are the destination of choice, yep. whether it be for uh, people to come in and film productions here, whether it be for people to hold events here, yep. whether it be for uh, theatrical productions to come. Um, we've got you know, we've got this incredible offering here now. We've just redone the, the concert hall in the Sydney Opera House, which people are now saying is one of the best acoustic opera houses in the world. We've got the Walsh Bay Arts Precinct down there. We've got an extraordinary um, explosion in, in our film industry. You know, the powerhouse in Parramatta, we've got, we've got all of this cultural activity um, exploding in, in, in our state. And, uh, and I want the rest of the world to see that. Well, and we at the Academy do too. And it's interesting, so you, when you're talking about, this is what I love about positions that you hold. You're able to, I guess, from a condor position, mm. see all of these various different things that are available to you and how do you connect them? I've got another question for you because you're always passionate about this. If you were gonna make a movie yourself, ah. and, and except I'm not letting you be the director. Right. That's out, that's off the table. You're my location scout, okay. right? You've been all around New South Wales. What are some of the most beautiful locations that you've seen that you'd like to make your movie? And what would be at the heart of your movie? That's a tougher <laughs> one. Well, let's start with the easy part. Yeah. Um, so in terms of location, look, I live on the Northern Rivers. Yeah. So there is no more, I think, beautiful part physically yeah. of Australia. Yeah. Uh, you know, it starts with Byron Bay, but it go into that incredible hinterland. Yeah. Um, it, is, it is quite special. But that having been said, I was out in Broken Hill last weekend for the Broken Hill Festival. Um, and uh, to see that landscape out in... Um, What's it Silverton, looking like at, at the moment? It's, it's actually greener than, than it's probably been for a long time. Um, but, you know, the... Every the, time George Miller goes out west, they, they break the drought. It's, it's exactly. <laughs> it's ex exactly. Um, and it's, you know, the... the the, just this rolling kilometre after kilometre um, of nothing is, it's like you're on the moon. Um, so when you're, when you're there, when you're at the Northern Rivers, when you look at the, you know, I was, I was out in Orange um, uh, two nights ago and, and to see that beautiful landscape with the, the, the wineries. And, I mean, we just have, we have literally everything here in New South Wales. Um, and I'm, I'm 
I'm really sort of, it's, it's difficult to choose where you'd have it. But what would it be about? I mean, it would be about the Australian story because we have always had at the heart of our greatest artists a connection with landscape, whether that's Patrick White or, you know, Peter Sculthorpe. Um, we've, got, we've got the most extraordinary connection and powerful connection of who we are as a people to the land. Um, you know, Aboriginal people have known that for tens of thousands of years. And I think that um, we're really understanding that now. I think one of the things that COVID did was make us strip back to what's important to us. Um, and that goes back to values, um, but it also goes back to connection, not only to each other, but also to our country. And isn't it extraordinary? Obviously our connection to land, First Nations culture, it's such a rich history. It's a traumatic history. Of course it is. It's a tragic history, but it's also a history filled with pride. It is. And I do believe that it's only the joyous nuance of story yeah. that can capture all of those pluses and minuses, the goods and the bads, and place them in a way that nourish all of our young people. Absolutely. You know, I just saw a, a, a play at, um, uh, at Griffin. Griffin? Yeah, um, yeah Whitefellow Yellow Tree, which was about just a beautiful story about two young Aboriginal men. And telling those stories to a broader audience, you know, not just the hundred people who are going to see it in the Griffin Theatre, mm. but to the tens of thousands of people who'll see it through Australian film, that's what I want. Minister Franklin, thanks so much for joining us. We're really excited about the, uh, let's call it the Actors Week of Celebration. We're celebrating screen culture, we're celebrating storytelling rather than argument. Minister Franklin, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Rob. Pleasure to be here. Cheers, mate.